The next tutorial is building on what we saw in the planning document. Okay, we are, you guys have all created now a, a planning document and I've gone through and taken a look at them. Um, and there are a few different variations. Okay, you can see a few uh, variations on how people approach this, um, some kind of more detailed, some, you know, less detail. Uh, some are using, you know, text to give instructions. Some are using color. So there's a few of them. Uh, I've got some old versions here that I wanted to demonstrate. Um, so some are, for example, here, a little difficult to follow. Some are uh, include sort of every choice, right? Um, and then we've got some that are maybe simple to follow. Um, I like that this uses color. This is a clever way to help differentiate sort of what's happening, helps break things up compared to something like this. It's a little diff more difficult to uh, to sort of distinguish. Um, the reason that that matters is that you won't always be working by yourself. Now, the this lesson, uh, it's been a couple of days since you created your plan, uh, and hopefully now you have the, I guess, challenge of going back and looking at your work and deciding what was I thinking when I did this? What was I, you know, hoping to do? Or what was I trying to do? What did I mean here, right? And so, you know, if, if I am working in a team and remember, you may be working with a developer, you may be working with a client, maybe working with a project manager, you may be working with other designers, um, handing this off to someone, giving them something to work with that they can decipher and understand is going to make you an easy person to work with. And you want that. You want to be working with people who, you know, take the time to document things clearly and properly. Um, it just is good workflow and good work process. And it also helps you if you ever have to go back to your work to, you know, look at, oh, how was I doing this and what was the plan? So given that there has been a little bit of time between you creating your document and this, you know, building onto the next section, which is going to be 3.8b here, part two, um, I would like you to go back and take a look at uh, what you did and then start to build it. Now, uh, to help out with that, just a quick reminder of how this works. Okay, so the game is basically, it runs on auto. We've got the girl and the boy. We click on the flag and then you know, there's a variable that's selected. And as that happens, the um, referee has to make a decision based on some conditionals, um, who is the winner, okay? There are a couple of um, say actions that happen. There are a couple of costume changes, right? So we've got the girl's got a costume when she's waiting, the boy's got a costume when she's waiting. When we run this, we have a costume change that changes, you know, to them sort of playing their their choice. Um, we have a variable happening and also the referee has a say and a costume change. He's got three or she, I'm not sure. The whistle has got uh, a left, a right, right? So depending on who wins, we've got a left position, we've got a tie position and we've got left again. Anyways, you get the idea. There's another position and then it points to the boy. Okay, if any of you wins. Okay, and so what we're learning here is that boys never beat girls at rock, paper, scissors, apparently. Uh, there we go. Whew, took some work. All right, so that said, I have also created uh, this here for you to take a look at. You can use this. I've included it also uh, in section B. I've, I, from here, you'll be able to view, there's an image that you can look at where you can just go back to the video and take a look here. Um, I just want to talk through a little bit of what, what you're seeing here. So I've divided this up into sort of a couple sections, okay? I've got the setup, which is all stuff that happens before, you know, ever interacting with the game, okay? These are things that need to be set up beforehand. Then we've got sort of the front end, things that you can see happening, and then the back end, which is like the logic. Okay, and I've got kind of this dividing line because you'll see that some of the process crosses over and like something happens in the front and then it affects the back and then the logic says, okay, now we have to do this because of that. Okay, so this sort of dividing line divides our front and our back. So we've got, as I said earlier, right from here, we've got a couple things happening. Those are outlined here. We've got, you know, uh, costumes for the boy, costumes for the girl, costumes for the ref. These are my um, create costumes, two, two, and a three. I've got a, obviously, create my sprites. I've got to have variables. Okay, so we've got the, the variable for the boy, the variable for the girl, um, and those are based on, you know, random choices between one and three. Uh, and then in our front end, we have some sort of instructions happening, right? So uh, we play the game um, and we have these saves happening, right? So we go 
boy does his play, girl does her play, ref does uh, their, their costume change. And then we have our saves that are associated with those plays, okay? Uh, and then in the back end, we then have to start deciphering what happens, okay? So, and, and it sort of starts left and moves to the right. So there's our variable being chosen. This is the play happening in the front. This is the variable being checked in the back. Okay, once that happens, then we have some comparisons happening. So, you know, if, and the way that this works is I've tried to use, you know, this greenish color for the, for the boy, this, I guess, orangey color for the girl. And when you're comparing the boy to the girl, then this divides out going, um, you know, if the boy's variable is one and the girl variable is two or three, this is the girl win, this is the boy win. Okay, the other thing you'll notice here, and I saw a couple students do the same thing, um, in, let me just demonstrate here, in this example, here we have every every choice. So we've got, if the girl's variable is one and the boy's variable is one, that's a tie. And here we've got, again, if the girl's variable is two and the boy's is two, that's a tie. And again, three and three, at a tie. So this is three um, steps, which is fine. But what you'll see in mine, uh, I did it like this. I said, if the boy's is equal to the girl's, doesn't matter if it's one or two or three, if they're equal, it's a tie. And that removes, um, one whole section of sort of planning, right? So compared to here, where you've got to include it three times, this, this process simplifies that a little bit. Now it's not right or wrong, it's maybe a slightly more efficient, but it might help you to see everything in, you might, you might find this view easier to, to work with, okay? So, you know, it sort of depends on each person, as long as it's clear to someone who's looking at it that's not you, that I can understand what's happening here, okay? All right, so we have that happening, and then after tie and after girl wins and boy wins, our broadcast come up to the front again, and then we have our, you know, our reset happening to reset everything. Um, I'm actually missing a couple of things. I'm missing a costume change up here, um, but I think that's about it. You can use this. Uh, you might be better off using your own. You may wanna go back to your own document and work from that and get a sense of how close you were, how, you know, were you missing anything? Does your game work? at the end of the, the, the um, process, okay? So I'd say start with yours, try and see if you can get it to work using your program, uh, your um, plan. And then if you're struggling, come back and take a look at mine and see if you can get that to work, okay? But hopefully you should have the skills at this point to do everything you need. There's nothing that's actually new in here. All that we've added is sort of the planning and the pseudocode uh, and then the flowchart pieces, right? But there's nothing that's actually new in terms of code here. Uh, so everyone should be able to handle this. All right. Good luck. I look forward to seeing your solutions.